So it's the end of 2019 now, and I've had the Fujifilm X-T3 since March, uh, and I've been using it at all the weddings I've had this year, and I absolutely love the Fuji system. So much so, sold all my Canon gear, put that money towards getting another camera, got the X-T20, got some awesome camera lenses, and now I'm an exclusive Fujifilm camera shooter. I also thought it'd be an amazing time to share with you the wedding settings that I put for my cameras uh, to enable me to work the fastest and the easiest and just to kind of make the day less about the gear and more about trying to be in the right place at the right time and taking some amazing shots. The first thing that I would recommend to every wedding photographer shooting Fujifilm, get the 56mm 1.2, this old thing here. This is an amazingly beefy looking uh, camera lens. It goes down to f1.2. Gives you that amazing separation in the background, some bokeh if you wish, uh, if you're into that kind of stuff. Me, I just like shooting in low light with it and I really like the distance that it can cover. I wanna start by walking through the physical dials on the camera and why I've chosen each one. So let's start with the top right hand dial, which is the shutter speed. And I lock mine off at 125. What I want during a wedding is to eliminate any shaky movement for myself if I've just, you know, pressed the button a bit too hard and shaken the camera. And I also want to minimize any movement of the subjects coming towards or away from me. 125th of a second is perfectly acceptable for natural light. It's also within the sync speed of the camera, so if you're using flash, you can just slap a flash on, stick it off camera like I've got up here. If I need to adjust the picture to make it lighter or darker, I'll use the aperture or the ISO instead. The xc 3 has got an amazing ISO range, so I can use that instead of worrying about my shutter speed. On the left-hand dial, on the other side of the uh, prism, pr prism, not really sure what's in there, it's not prism, it's a little screen, TV screen. Uh, we have the ISO dial, which I don't have locked down, and I keep completely flexible. In fact, it's probably my most worked dial on the entire camera, because the ISO is the least important thing for me. Uh, for me, what I want to get is I want to get a sharp image, so I want that fast shutter speed. Then I want a shallow depth of field, so I'll modify the aperture accordingly. And then lastly, I'll make it up to be bright or dark enough using that ridiculous ISO on this camera. Uh, so I will happily go up to 6400 or 12800 if I need to. You can always denoise in Lightroom, but you can't unblur or add more depth of field if I need to in post. Moving on to the back of the camera, we go to the D-pad. When I press up, I want to have the autofocus modes. I keep mine on zone. It gives like a little box on the screen which I can move around with the joystick nice and easy. Uh, and that will let me recompose or it will let me reframe a shot. So if I say I want to blow in the left hand side of the picture, I will just shuffle it over to the left uh, and then all my focusing kind of points will be within that box. Stick that on the person's head uh, and we'll be fine. If I want to recompose again, I just shuffle the joystick over, get what I want, snap away. If I press left on the D-pad, I'll go into my film simulations I keep mine on Provia, which is the standard, it's just good for skin tones, you know, you're shooting in RAW hopefully at this point, so I wouldn't really worry about that one. On the right hand side, I'll go into white balance and I'll always have it on the K for Kelvin, whoever that may be, and 5600 on the numbers. Uh, this is a good kind of midpoint, it's about daylight, you know, it does mean that if I'm inside shooting under tungsten light, go a bit orange, but again in RAW, doesn't make a difference, right? Uh, I just think it's a lot easier to not concentrate on the white balance in the slightest uh, and just focus on getting your shots. One thing which I do think you should change and isn't in the settings is on the down button. I've set it so the preview exposure in manual mode is either on or off. That's a mouthful, right? Even I don't really understand what that means. But what it does, it kind of changes what you see in the viewfinder from uh, real life. So if it's dark there, the pitch is going to be dark, to adjusting for darkness, essentially. So if it's dark over there, the viewfinder will kind of brighten the image so you can have a quick look around. The display back button, I very rarely use, uh, if anything. Same with the Q button, the quick guide thing. I don't use it at all. I don't like presets because every situation's different. Uh, on top though, the FN button, just in between the exposure compensation and shutter, Press that and I get face detection on or off. 
Uh, this can be very handy if you are trying to selectively gain focus, if you're using that shallow depth of field and you want to gain focus of someone. But be careful though if you're shooting in crowds because it may focus on the wrong person. If you're shooting with more than one or two people, uh, I would turn it off. If you're shooting just portraits or just a couple of people, like a couple, um, keep it on and it may assist you uh, nailing that focus. And on the very front of the camera we have the MCS, which is the manual, continuous and single shot. Most of the day I'll have it on S for single shot. Sometimes I'll put it into C if I've got someone moving towards me. Say if they are coming down the aisle and they're constantly moving, stick it on C. You can have, kind of half press the uh, shutter button and it will just keep refocusing on whoever's coming towards you. One of the biggest changes that I make is the front aperture dial, the one on the camera lens, the one that everyone claims is amazingly great. I set to A for automatic and I set it so that the front dial here, the one just in front of the shutter button, controls the aperture. Uh, you may be thinking, John, what are you doing? You've got an amazing dial and five minutes ago you just told me how much you love dials and the reason why you bought a Fuji was because you love dials, and I do. On certain camera lenses, like the kit lens, the 18 to 55, it doesn't have hard stops, so you can't twist and then it stops. It, it keeps on going. It's indefinite, it's like an electronically uh, controlled one. And what I don't want to do is, during a wedding, I'm holding the camera like this and I'm refocusing or I'm zooming out with the 18 to 55, and I accidentally, with my massive thumbs, uh, change the aperture at the same time. And just look at the difference between 1.2 and 1.4. It's one click, that's it, to 1.4. Like, just one little nudge would change my settings completely. So I'd rather have it up here. I'd rather have it up here any day of the week. To get to those specific functions, there's a couple of shortcuts within the camera. Uh, if you hold down the display back button on the very back for a couple of seconds, it will give you the ability to remap all of the buttons. So this is where I remapped the down on the D-pad. To remap what happens when you put the camera in auto though, you have to go into the command dials. It's a bit of a hassle, but in the menu system, uh, we've got to go all the way down to the setup. We've got to go to the button dial settings. We've got to find the command dial settings. Uh, and then we set the front one to F and the back one to SS. You've then got to scroll all the way down to the third page where it says Aperture Ring Setting A uh, and change that from Auto to Command. So this means whenever you flick the aperture dial all the way around to A, instead of it saying, okay, you're on Auto, what I'm gonna do for you now is predict for you and tell you what aperture you should need. No, it instead goes to command, which means you can control it with that front dial, which is very handy. So one of the most important things you can do on your camera is set a backup, and we can backup inside the camera to the second memory card, which is mind blowing. When I had the old Canon 6D, you would shoot and you'd shoot and shoot onto one memory card, and then at periodic points of the day, you'd pop that card out and put another one in, and at least if the worst happened and one card went down or got stolen, you'd only lose, you know, 500 pictures or something and, uh, you know, a big segment of someone's wedding day would just be gone. Finished. So the X-T3 can shoot one image onto RAW and at the exact same time generate a JPEG copy to go onto the second memory card inside the camera. And for me, what I like to do is have a huge, kind of lower write speed memory card in slot 2 of my camera and the fast, uh, higher-end Sandisk Gold kind of uh, SD cards into slot one. To be able to change how the camera sets up and saves images, we just need to go into the menu settings, pop down to the setup and go down to save data setup, and then in card slot settings, bracket still image, select raw slash JPEG. And to make sure that the quality of the images going into those cards is the best it can be, Again in the settings, but this time in image quality settings, I change it so I have fine plus raw. I get my base raw image, but then I also get a good quality uh, JPEG as well. Uh, reasonable quality, I believe it's about 6,000 by 4,000 pixels. Not the biggest, not the smallest, but it does mean that if I have a large enough memory card and slot two for the JPEGs, I can shoot the entire day, two, 3,000 pictures onto one card there. I'm never going to edit those unless something goes wrong 
but it's really good to know that I have a copy if something goes really wrong. So there we have it. Those are the perfect settings for a wedding photographer shooting on the X-T3. You can get it pretty close on any of the Fuji cameras. Uh, the X-T20 I'm filming this on had to change a couple of settings around, but the whole theory and the kind of the button layout's almost identical. In the future, I'll make a video version of this video. Uh, that is saying what settings I should be using for this to film something with. Uh, but for today, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you stick around and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.